Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good evening to everyone. Welcome to the next episode of AIUM TV, Pips Chat Show, Happy Pips, Healthy Chat. I am Arisha Zahi and I will be your host for tonight. For those currently watching our live, do not forget to click the like button and to subscribe to AIUM TV channel for more updates. Follow our Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And good thing, you guys can also listen to our podcast on Spotify at IUM TV. All right, so tonight's episode definitely is fascinating with the title, title Reading for Pleasure or Pressure. And we have an amazing guest with us tonight. She is young, but she is thriving. Her name is Adelia, the author of best-selling books, All Minds Are Broken. Give her a round of applause. Hi, Adelia. Hi there. Welcome to Pips Chat Show. Thank you so much for inviting me. How are you feeling today? Alhamdulillah, doing good. Alhamdulillah. Okay, that's great. But um, I wish that you could introduce yourself more. Uh, there might be an audience out there who doesn't might not know you. So could you introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Adelia. Uh, my pen name is Adelia Khalid. I am an author. My first debut novel it was called All Minds Are Broken, which is a psychological thriller, which actually was a number one best-selling MPH no book and uh, is my only book so far. But I am in the work of writing my second book, and I am more than excited to share that with the world and share that with Wow, um, you are currently working on your second book? Yes, it's in the works and yeah. <laughs> All right, so actually I haven't uh, read your book, but you know, I am so, uh, so, exciting, so excited to read your books. Uh, so I hope I will like, you know, go to MPH and might buy your books later. And I oh. cannot wait to read your second book as well. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Okay, great. So, um, I really want to know, so you, since you are working on your second book, I really want to know that how did you start to realize that you have passion in writing a book? Okay, so I think the story of, you know, finding passion is always going to be that cliche answer of like, oh, I looked at something and it made me feel inspired and... Mm -hmm the story goes on with them going to the career and to be honest my story is just as cliche as that but probably because it's a bit earlier so when I was younger I really liked reading books uh, because that was always like a big culture that was you know instilled in me through family through my parents through school and for me growing up it was a, a source of escapism a source of you know where I could go to whenever I was feeling sad, whenever something was happening in real life, I could escape to through books. And it was then that I realized that it wasn't just about reading books. Even when you read, right, you just escape into someone else's world. But when you write, it's how you can express yourself through, you know, your own thoughts and your own experiences. And I actually started writing when I was seven, but it wasn't writing per se. It oh. was like a uh, log, log book that you log can get book. from 20 cent stores, right? And we were mm -hmm. supposed to do our homework in that. I would use those to write stories, which, okay, don't do. <laughs> I wouldn't encourage you to do, but it was what I did. <laughs> Why not? So, Look at you right now. You're already an author, like a writer. Why not? Okay. <laughs> so maybe you should. <laughs> but uh, stay in school, kids. So basically, I used this book and they just became bigger stories and longer stories. But I never really considered, you know, going to the publishing industry because I was like, I'm just another girl who's just writing stories in like blog books. Who's going to read them, right? But then uh, the more that I read books, the more that I read up into the publishing industry, the more I thought it's not impossible. So it was then that I started writing a story that I knew was going to 
be more concrete. Because before this, what I did was I just took the books and just wrote whatever I wanted. I didn't plan the plot. I didn't plan the characters. I just wrote based on my heart's content. Mm-hmm. But if I wanted to do this professionally, I had to like have a plan. So I thought about the characters, thought about the plot, and I did a full outline. Outline is basically when you uh, write down all the specific details of a story prior to writing it. So that's what I did. And lo and behold, it created All Minds Are Broken. And through a bunch of query letters, a bunch of emails, a bunch of emailing publishers, and a bunch of rejections, alhamdulillah, uh, White Coat Publishing answered my email and decided, yeah, we're going to give this girl a chance. So, wow. And- <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, All Minds Are Broken are your first book. So... How was people reaction uh, for that book? You know, when you were releasing it, when you when you were telling people about them. Oh yeah, okay. So how I would categorize people would be, you know, different kinds of reactions. I would say that the first reactions I ever got, or the first reaction I ever got actually, uh, was my twin sister. Like my twin sister is my baby brother. Yeah. So. Whenever I do something, you know, before giving it to literally anyone, I would show it to her first, and then I would see what she thinks before I do something stupid, basically. <laughs> All right. So when she told me that she really liked it, she really enjoyed it, and she was like, this has a lot of potential, that was my, like, green ticket, like, green light into going into the next stage of sending an email. Yeah. So I sent in emails and the first round of emails were not, I would say, positive. Like, I have to admit that the book industry in Malaysia is not exactly the most booming necessarily. Because, let's face it, there's been like this big stereotype that even though reading is a stereotypically beneficial hobby in our society, we don't necessarily hear people yeah we don't necessarily hear people going like oh but we have to read local books it's mostly people who look up to you know big publishers uh, mainly the big five in the uk and the us you know like harper collins uh, penguin books books that are you know stereotypically seen as this is going to be good because a big publisher recognizes ah uh, yes yes I understand. Uh, local publishers right even so, it's like very rare for someone to think, oh, this publisher is going to be good even be- because it's Malaysian. And I really think that a culture of appreciating our local books and local authors should be brought in more, not only because it's supporting our economy, supporting people who are Malaysian, but it's a source of representation, a source of, you know, finding something relatable in literature. And... Some of the emails that I got weren't even, let's say, rejections, but they were letters and long essays of why the book publishing industry in Malaysia is dead. And therefore, they wouldn't be receiving uh, authors, debut authors, who don't actually have like a foundation or platform within themselves. So, for example, celebrities or people who are already famous and would not have to have like a lot of publicity to bring out their books into the world which is, I think, a bit unfair. And not just unfair, but, you know, minimizing the probability of the whole industry to boost even further because you don't have anything new, anything fresh. And then I guess it would go on to people who were closer to me who haven't read the book, which would be my family, my friends, who weren't exactly surprised because they knew that I was always passionate in reading and writing. But, you know, when it actually happens, when you actually see the book in a bookstore, it feels different and it's shocking nevertheless. So, but that was very interesting to see. So they basically really support you in writing. And yeah, I would they bought your books. My family definitely. Some people uh-huh. were definitely skeptical, but I think that can be related to any artistic field. It's risky. You don't really know what's going to happen, but. Uh, you know, my book wasn't really received uh, that great in the first week or so. But after more, you know, advertisements, marketing, uh, sending the book to bookstagrammers and booktubers, Malaysian ones, in fact, uh, mm-hmm. 
it gained more traction and that's where we are today. Alhamdulillah, oh my God. So your twin sister is definitely one of the reason you are here today. Thank definitely. you to your twin sister. <laughs> that's great. Oh my God. Oh. Basically, family really, really like a huge supporter for us, right? So for your book, like All Minds Are Broken, uh, could you like briefly explain to us what is it all about? Because you say it's about, um, sorry, uh, is it about horror? If I'm not mistaken, I listen to. I heard just yeah. To some extent, it can be categorized as a horror, but I would mm -hmm. more uh, go for something thriller because it, it doesn't necessarily have any supernatural element, so it might not be a horror to most. But I think genres are getting a bit more blurred because of how many people are redefining what the stories are. But for me, All Minds Are Broken is mostly a psychological thriller. So basically, it's about uh, five people who meet up in their dreams. And these five people are people of different ethnicities, different nationalities, different faiths. But they have to work together because they're all, uh, you know, in each other's minds, literally, because whenever they go to sleep, they are meeting the same five people over and over again in their dreams. And although they see it as something that's normal, because they do not know if these people are actually, you know, real life people, but more and more as the story progresses, they find out that it's something even more sinister and even more interesting. Oh, I see. So it's psychological thriller. Oh my God, it's really exciting. I'm going to buy it. The next time I'm going out, inshallah. So, inshallah. before we dive in with more questions, there is Culture and Arts Project 2021 currently happening right now until 29th May 2021. This project is held by Independent Performing Arts Club in Pact from RIUM Pago, collaborating with RIUM TV, RIUM FM, MPP UTH and Pago, Citra CFS RIUM, and Nafas Tari RIUM Gomba. With the team bringing our culture closer, this project is held in Bahasa Malaysia. There are various of programs like Tarian Zapin Documentary, Bual Bicara Irama Malaysia, Short Film, and also Art and Culture Challenge. If you guys are interested, you all can watch it exclusively on Impact, Pago YouTube, Instagram and Twitter. All right, so without further ado, let us get started with the question, um, with more questions, very fun questions. So, um, so in your opinion, all right, how would, like, how would we want to have, how do you see the habit of reading among Malaysians? Is it still alive or no, it's so so already now? Okay, that's a very interesting question. I'd say that it's not exactly a yes or no answer because it depends on the community that you revolve yourself around. So as an author, I needed to, you know, use a lot of social media to put my name out there to the book title out there so that people knew that it existed and actually through this process i met a lot of people who were passionate in not just reading and writing but just literature in general so people who are bookstagrammers for a living booktubers so what they do is they post reviews online and some of them have very like aesthetic picture taking so there's like photography it's a real thing and it's something that people are passionate in and a lot of Malaysian in fact are passionate in it. In fact, uh, you also have organizations like book clubs and uh, Booktube Malaysia who are working hard towards bringing a bigger culture of reading in Malaysians. But I think that it's easy to generalize how Malaysians, a lot of them are not really interested in reading. And I would say that it's not the majority because I know that a lot of people like reading, but not necessarily reading in the way that we know. Because some people uh, will only read self-help books, for example, because they think it works for them. Some people will only read religious books and some people, uh, their stick is reading fiction, right? And I think that's where we have the whole idea of reading wrong. Some people read for fun and some people read because it's how they gain knowledge. It's how they become better people. 
And uh, a lot of people who read for fun, for example, are not necessarily seen as readers. And I think that's really unfortunate. I think that anyone who, you know, likes stories or likes to read, regardless of what genre it is, should be seen as a reader. And I think that's how we would see that there are actually a lot of readers in Malaysia. Oh, I see. So it's really like uh, they are passion or they are reading for education knowledge, right? So yeah. in your opinion, how do you think your read together session, you know, I watch, I saw your um, Instagram account and you do like the IGTV where you read together with your followers, which is, I, I think it's really um, a really good movement. But how do you think it will increase uh, your read together session, increase the interest of people to read? Uh, for me, necessarily, the lie was mostly to, you know, uh, as a way to market my book. But at the same time, mm -hmm. I do agree you, it was a way to, you know, make people think that reading is fine, make because a lot of people, including myself actually, uh, extroverts who don't really like sitting alone, not moving and like reading a book. But mm -hmm. for someone as myself who likes surrounding themselves with people, right? Reading has always been a good, you know, escape from that. But at the same time, a lot of people feel more encouraged when they see other people reading. So we would have like, you know, the Instagram live or some other activities could really help. Also like, you know, book clubs where people are given the same book to discuss about, to read about. Because yeah, humans are social creatures, right? So whatever we do, it's more encouraged if we see someone else doing it and not just doing it, but doing it with us together. So I think that really helps. Yeah, I think I can relate to that because uh, right now we are having an like ODL, online distance learning, and I always, always have to like open my YouTube uh, and then I will search for like, study with me kind of video and I will watch it while I'm studying. So it really helps me with, a re uh, with like doing a revision or doing my assignments. All right, so um, you know Nilam? government initiative, yeah. you know, like Nilam, we did uh, during high school. So in your personal experience, okay, um, do you think the government initiative, Nilam, is really effective in helping the uh, youngsters to keep on reading? That's also a very interesting question. I would say that it's not exactly the number one reason why people get into reading, admittedly mm -hmm. so. Uh, for me personally, I was always, you know, an avid reader, but I was not the most hardworking when it came to writing reports for Nilam. Yeah. So, yeah. They, yeah, there are actually a lot of people like that, actually. They really like re reading, but they're not really the kind of person who will go the further step of writing reports in Nilam. And there are some people who don't like reading, but are really hardworking at writing Nilam reports. And these are the people that Nilam helps, actually. Because they are the kind of people who, you know, want to get more points from Nilam, right? So they would go ahead and read. Uh, and without Nilam, they wouldn't be reading. So I do think that it's helping some people. But I don't think it's helping all people. But even if it's helping some people, I think that it is, you know, causing something good. Uh yes. Yeah, so rather than nobody reading at all and only some of the people who want to read, read, Nilam is encouraging the people who would not read to read more. So it's something, I would say. But it's not the number one thing that makes people read. Oh, what a great mind. I think, yeah, it's better than nothing at all. It's better mm -hmm. to have like one person reading that rather than no one reading at all. I think that's a really great mind. There. So do you think like in Nilam really influence in your interest in reading? Mm, you know, referring back to what I already said, mm -hmm. for me, you know, because I started reading at a really young age, before I even knew what Nilam was, but oh, I think a lot of my friends would say that, yeah, Nilam did influence them into reading, because Nilam isn't just, you know, the book where you record and stuff, they have Nilam programs when it comes to, you know, uh, the library, uh, adding more books into the library, uh, and the Toku Nilam program actually is really good. My friend was a participant, and I could see a lot of improvement when it came to people who were directly involved with the Toku Nilam program. And I think that 
the best part of the Nilam program. Mm, I see. All right, so it's a really great initiative. I must say, like Nilam in reading, in making reading culture in Malaysia really effective. Don't you think so, right? So, you know, um, as many bookstores have to close down to this pandemic due to this pandemic, like COVID nineteen, right now. So, how would you suggest uh, people out there to get books to read during the time or way for them to get books to read? Okay, so I come from a really small town. So safe to say, I don't really have access to a lot of books, especially new releases. They come to my town pretty late. So I would say that uh, the best way to get books online are through Google Play Books or Kindle. Kindle is actually probably my number one choice. But mm-hmm. I also think there should be a given to other applications that people might, might not think about as, you know, credible places to get books. So some people might uh, have the debate that manga or graphic novels are not necessarily books. But I think that reading is reading. And if you enjoy something that's more visual, uh, you know, all, ha- all given to you. So. I think that, you know, apps like Webtoon or Web Manga are really good to get graphic novels and comics and manga and manhwa. And then you can also, some people have, you know, a stereotype about this website, but Wattpad actually has some great choices, even when it comes to literature. When I oh, had... I yeah, read yeah. Wattpad. <laughs> I read okay. Wattpad and Webtoon. Yeah. Yeah, same. So, so that's like, even especially the older generation, right, will go and say that, you know, this isn't real reading. But I would say for someone who, you know, doesn't have access to buying books, doesn't have access to to go to a library because there's no way that's like really close. Wattpad and Webtoon are free and accessible and it's reading nonetheless. So, yeah. All right. So, um, I have one question, like, you know, you already released your All Minds Are Broken book, right? So I want to know if you are thinking about like releasing it in ebook, in you know, in not physical book, online. Have you ever oh. thought about it? Yeah, sure. It's actually uh, in ebook. It was just it was new actually. Uh, you can get it from my publisher's website, so it's whitecoat.com. Just Google whitecoat, and you'll be able to get uh, all minds are broken in ebook form, which I think wow. is really yeah. So you yeah. Can, we can get all minds are broken from MPH, is it correct? Uh, physical yeah. bookstores and also whitecoat, whitecoat for ebooks. Great. Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna search uh, the ebooks. <laughs> Later, yeah. after this, inshallah. <laughs> so, I even um, have like, an MPH where I live. So, the ebook was really important for me as well. I really made sure that, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so, the kind, I would write Kindle, Kindle. How am yeah, I going to pronounce it? Kindle uh, is, is also one of the ebooks, interesting apps for reading. So, yep. however, do you think that people should rely completely on ebook compared to physical book? So, for me, I think that uh, it's never really a good thing to gatekeep a community or gatekeep a hobby. So, for me, it's never really like, oh, a physical book is better or uh, an ebook is better. It really comes down to a person's preference. So, let's say if Aisha really likes ebooks right because she thinks it's more accessible it's you know cheaper so much cheaper but then you know Ali really likes physical books because you know you can hold them they have this really nice smell you can collect them but just because Aisha likes something or Ali likes something doesn't mean that there's a correct way to to read or to do something it's just really up to the person and shouldn't be gatekept because it just makes it more you know negative Make the community a positive place where anyone can have different opinions. And I think that's even better. Yes, I'm, I agree with you 100%. Like, it's better to have like, positive. We should keep on being positive. So, um, Adelia, I want to ask if you are currently uh, pursuing your study or how? Yeah, I'm currently pursuing my studies. So currently, I'm in Pusat Asasi UITM Dengkil pursuing foundation in Tessel. And oh. inshallah, 
yeah i want to pursue english even further probably english literature or something like that inshallah in the future we'll see what you you have to say okay um so currently you are pursuing your studies so how would uh, how you divide your time with your studies and your writing you know you are currently working on your second books uh, and also reading book you know how how you divide your time Well, for me, I've never been the kind of person who has this strict timetable, like 7.30, I have to do this, 8.30, I have to do this. Because even if I made a timetable, I would not follow it. I see. Like, to be honest, I would not. I'm more of the person who's very, you know, free-versed in what she wants to do. Whatever feels good, I do it. But it's become harder, obviously, to just do anything and make sure you do everything in time, make sure you do everything, you know, systematically. So mm-hmm. what I do is not a strict timetable, but more of a checklist. So a daily checklist. What am I going to do today? So my head would start and process those activities and decide that, oh, I have to do this. So when I do this, I take it on my little list and then make sure that I do all those things in a day. And I think it really helps for people who really like positive reinforcement because that feeling you get when you take that activity off your checklist, yes. right? Oh, really great and motivates you. I can relate to that because I also have like I do not really a uh, very like a uh, really follow schedule. I always always do just like what you say checklist, uh, daily checklist. It really helps, and the the feeling after like you take your uh, finish assignments or whatnot, you feel like really, really, oh, that's really good to know that we already did that. So do you have any like preferable time to read a book? Maybe it's at night or in, during in the morning? Mm, that question has changed for me, you know, the past few years. When I was younger, I was that one weird kid who would you know, bring a book wherever she goes. Like, even to parties and sport events, I would be that one weird kid who was reading. Uh, and that activity was actually, I think, really beneficial for me. But, you know, socially wasn't the best thing to do. But these days, I always bring a book wherever I go, but I don't necessarily, you know, read at parties because, you know, when you're older, those things are probably less socially acceptable. Uh, mm-hmm. So, yeah, Uh, what I do is whenever I have free time, whenever I feel like it, to be honest, because when it comes to hobbies, you know, the title for today's talk is, you know, reading for pleasure or pressure. Anything that, you know, you say that you have to do instantly becomes something that's, you know, pressure. Pleasure mm-hmm. is something that you do for fun, something that you do without anyone telling you to, uh, something that you do, you know, your heart tells you that this is what I do for fun. This is what I do to relax. So I would say that whenever I feel like it, I read. But I will say that reading uh, your book with a cup of coffee beside you in the morning has like a different vibe to it. So maybe morning would be the best. So you will feel like aesthetically pleasing, right? If you read and your coffee or your tea is beside you. Oh my God, that feels though. In the morning, feeling the morning breeze. <laughs> right. Yep. And Reading outside, maybe so feeling the wind coming through you, <laughs> right? Um, so I want to know how would you uh, advise people out there to get interest in reading? So when it comes to interest in reading, right, or interest mm-hmm. in anything, to be honest, it always starts with you know trying it out. I think a lot of people really give up on reading because. They think, oh, they read one book and they think all books are boring. I really think it's not about reading books in itself, but finding a book that suits you, finding a book that you will like. Because books are essentially just movies in your head. And maybe to some people require more work because you have to read it, right? But I think that for me, reading is much more enjoyable because you create the actors, you create the cast, you create the setting, and everything is up to your mind. You're the director and all the characters are like little paper people that you can move around, which I think is fun. And so when your book is boring, obviously everything in your head is going to be boring. So let's say you really like Star Wars, for example, right, as a movie buff. You're probably not going to be the person who's going to go, oh, Jane Austen is... So much fun. 
like for me, I love Jane Austen. I'm obsessed. But I would also be the kind of person who would be obsessed with Pride and Prejudice as a movie. So I really think it would be a great way to find out your gateway book by looking into the movies that you like. So you already know what kind of genre you like, the characters that you probably feel more related, relatable to. And by looking at the movies that you like, you will find the book that you like because it's essentially the same thing. It's just a different medium. I see. So do you have any like recommendation books that based up, no, I mean, movie that based on books that you find it's really, really a hundred percent not related, but how shall I say this? Really similar, you know, that you feel like, oh my God, this is how I imagine it to be in the movie, you know? Do you have any recommendation books? Oh, that's really interesting, actually. I would say <laughs> that you know, a lot of movies have are like book adaptations, right? So I would yeah, say yeah. that if you like the movie, I can guarantee you that you will love the book and the book will probably be better. But that may be my biased point of view. But most likely, the book is going to be better. Yeah, and if you really think- like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think like it's really true. If you love the movie and if you read the books, you will love the books even more. Just like, um, I, I really love flipped book. Mm-hmm. And then I watched, I mean, I watched the movie first. I really loved the movie. And then I read flipped book. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, this is even better. I really love this one, but I really love the movie as well. I think I can relate to that. Like it's true yeah. what you say. Right. I can <laughs> so which uh, recommendation book do you have any like that you really love hmm. so I would say that anyone who really likes wait I'm looking at my bookshelves it's why I'm like <laughs> sure sure yeah I think anyone that really likes uh supernatural or like uh vampire diaries obviously go read the vampire diaries books obviously but a more underrated recommendation would be The Diviners by Libba Bray. And anyone who really likes dystopian movies like, uh, you know, Hunger Games or Divergent, obviously read the books. But also go for, you know, more underrated ones would be Blood Red Road by Moira Young or The Walled City. Uh, I think it's really good to go ahead and read books that are not really that popular so that you really find out the books that you like. Because when you only read books that are popular, obviously most people are going to like them because, you know, a lot of people really do. And if you venture into other books, you'll find out the niche kind of book that you really like, which is even better. I see. So that those are all the recommendation books from Adelia. So I hope... I hope you guys are definitely check check it out if you are interested, right? So, okay, I suddenly think of this question, you know. Um, do you have a, ever experienced writer's block? Ooh. If you do, if you do, how you overcome it? I really want to know how you overcome it, like how you deal with it. Yeah, I don't think anyone be it a writer or a non-writer, has ever not felt writer's block. And not just writer's block, but artist, art block, any kind of block that, you know, that's blocking you from doing something creative, doing something Mm -hmm. that you love. I think a lot of people don't really see that a writer's block is, you know, usually stems from not just not having the motivation to do anything, but not even have any ideas to go ahead and start doing it. And how to solve it is again not really uh, you know a black and white answer it's different for a lot of people but for me it's just the simplest way to say it is doing anything else you can't just sit in front of your laptop and think and think and think and think and miraculously find something in your head you know maybe it was in your brain but just hidden somewhere I don't think it works like that you have to stop staring at your laptop and go do anything else go read a book, go watch a movie, go walk in the park, you know, people watch maybe anything else. And inshallah, inspiration will strike you in some way or another. And it's better than just staring at a laptop because you're not going to get inspired by, you know, staring at your word doc. Unless, you know, your word doc is something interesting, which probably it does not yet because your writer's block is... Yeah. You. So just do anything else. Just do life. 
and life will find a way to give you something. Mashallah, what a really great word. You say that, find life, so life will find you. <laughs> oh, yeah, I really like that one. So, um, if you do not mind sharing your thought, you know, do you think the rewards you get after finishing the book, uh, All Minds Are Broken, worth your effort in terms of, you know, financial? Okay, so, okay, personally, uh, you know, when it comes to financials and publishing, you can go different routes. So you have traditional publishing, which is the route that I took. You can go self-publishing or vanity publishing. So traditional publishing is basically where you have your manuscript, you send it to traditional publishers, and they will do everything for you. They will help mm -hmm. you with the layout, they'll help you with the cover, uh, they'll help you with anything that comes to the more marketing side and not the writing side. When it comes to self-publishing, uh, it's basically the same thing, but you have to do everything uh, yourself with the publisher and you have to pay the publisher to publish your book. While when you are traditionally published, it's basically your job to write and the publisher is paying you as a writer. So as a traditionally published author, I would say that financially uh, it is worth it either way but it also depends on the royalties that you get obviously and for me because i started out writing when i was a minor when i thought that my book would never be seen by anyone so just mm -hmm. the fact out there just the fact that it's even out there and shockingly enough on the bestseller list is more than enough for me and more than i could ever wish for so alhamdulillah i really couldn't ask for more i see so you know it's, it saddens me that we're already at the end of the show, Adila. I wish to talk with you more and ask you like a lot of questions. But the time is envy uh, of us. Uh, do you have any like any last word, you know, regarding reading culture in Malaysia? Sure. So for me personally, I think that a big stereotype of reading in Malaysia is that one, it's beneficial, but no one is actually really pushing it personally to people and mm -hmm. telling them that, yeah, reading is not just important because, you know, the stereotypical reasons of, you know, it gives you knowledge, but it also gives a lot of people a sense of belonging, a sense of, yeah, this story is for you and you can enjoy it. And I think that reflected in how the book industry is not really the biggest industry for now, but I do have hope that especially new authors, new Malaysian authors, uh, those that are published internationally and those are published here, like uh, Lillian Lee, Hannah Alka, yours truly. Uh, inshallah, our industry will become even bigger when people look at it and appreciate it. And in the pandemic, obviously, we're given a lot more spare time to do things that are not necessarily the things that we have to do. And maybe to fill in this time, if you don't have a hobby, if you don't have something that you really like to do, maybe fill in the time with reading and even better, reading books that, you know, touch your soul in a way that a lot of books have touched mine. So, yeah, oh, thank you. So basically, reading is, if you have fun, it's, just like Adelia just said that uh, if it touched your soul, meaning it's you are reading for pleasure. And if it's gaining your knowledge, it's for pleasure. But if it's not, then it might be for pleasure. Correct? Is it correct, Adelia? What I'm saying. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Adelia, for spending your time with us in Pips Chat Show tonight. It is an honor and I had so much fun. Thank you also to our viewers for too for our for watching us from beginning to the end before i end i want to remind all of you that culture and art projects 2021 is currently happening right now until 29th may 2021 this project is held by independent performing arts club impact from ium pago collaborating with ium tv i ium fm mpp uth and pago Citra CFS AIUM and Afastari AIUM Gomba. With the team bringing our culture closer, this project is held in Bahasa Malaysia. There are several programs like Tarian Zapin Documentary, Balbicara Irama Malaysia, short film, also art and culture challenge. If you guys are interested, you all can watch it exclusively on Impact Pago, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter.
So we also have Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for you guys to follow for more updates. And you guys can listen to tonight's episode as a podcast on Spotify at IIM TV. So that's it. Thank you so much, Adelia, for being here with us. It is an honor with, for me to have you here. So we meet again next time. Bye-bye. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.